Oh, and a quick mail call from uh, Brett, old, old Brett Ryder. Uh, love the sticker. Uh, thanks for the note. Uh, Chuck does some cool stuff in his garage. He's got a. Um, he just finished uh, a Yamaha TW200. You'll have to correct me if that's wrong. Sorry. Uh, I'm new to his channel. I just watched some of his back videos. So had a Sears that he works on. He does stuff in his garage. He um, recently did a review of a shop fan, which I thought was pretty awesome. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck. Yours is on the way um, from me. So Because I've got your address. You get one whether you want it or not. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll be back in a second and put it on the cabinet. There you are up, uh, up on the board. I had to actually peel it off and put it because when I got close to the cabinet, it went poop, like this. <laughs> so I had to peel it off, put it back on, and it's still a little crooked, but I can live with that. Um, so check out Old Brett Ryder, link in the description, uh, along with these other YouTube guys. It's fantastic guys. I love these guys. So, And this one's um, Proline 40. That's the one I keep saying I can't remember his name, but it's right there. But just my eyes aren't as good as it used to be. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay, thanks. So, doing a little work on the 550 today. I'm replacing um, my instrument panel um, lights with some LEDs. Um, these are what's in them. And uh, they're not very good, and they're burning out because they're old now. And finding new ones are actually rather difficult, at least around here. So I ordered on Amazon some LED ones to replace them, and oh, look, they didn't send me anything. Oh no, wait, they did. There. So this entire big box for this, it was tucked underneath there, and I didn't, I mean, at first I thought, well, this, they did, what did, they sent me an empty box. You know, they don't have a padded envelope they could mail these in? Yeah. Anyway. Five bucks uh, for a package of ten. Um, it's ridiculous. And then I ordered one before, and it never showed up. So I thought, well, that's weird. And I was breaking down some Amazon boxes. Same thing. It was under the flap. I never saw it. So now I've got, I don't know, eight, nine of these more than I need. So if anybody needs some LED replacement bulbs like this one, let me know. Uh, I'll send them to you for free. I just, you know, it's just ridiculous. I uh, used one of them on my um, PTO light for the uh, Gilson um, since it was burnt out and these worked. So, uh, but I'll, I'll show you here in a second. So I'm replacing the lights in here, here, and then all of these. And um, I've replaced this one, but not this one. I want you to see the difference. But I've replaced these, and I'll show you those in a second. Here, there we go. So you can see there's just a subtle difference between the two in terms of brightness. These are a little bit brighter and a little whiter. Um, frankly, I don't care. I, I like either. Um, but it was more just convenience. I did replace these. The interesting part is this went from a green to, oops, this went from a green to now it's like a teal color, <laughs> but uh, that's fine. It's just a neutral switch. I can live with that. And then uh, turn signal lights, they light up better now, a little bit, not a lot. So, but it, these don't use a lot of juice as everybody knows, but these use even less. So, uh, no, no sense in not replacing them since these were burnt out anyway. So. And there's my wife. She's taking pies in. No time for me. <laughs> See that ball in the center of the intersection? That's a, literally a brass ball. Um, put here a long time ago. And, uh, yeah.
So that ball was hung there oh, a long time ago, a long time ago. And um, during the war, uh, World War II, uh, it was actually taken down and hidden because people were afraid that the brass would get caught up in the scrap drives at the time. And then it got lost. And in the 60s, they put a fake one up there. And then, um, not too long ago, they replaced it with the actual ball. So that brought bass, brass ball is really old. And that's brass ball corners. So I live in Paddock Lake. Now, if you've gotten letters from me or whatever, it'll say Salem. But that's just because we use the Salem Post Office. But we actually, I actually live in Paddock Lake. And that intersection we ju were just at with the brass ball, that actually has, uh, was a major intersection up until the early 1900s, uh, mid-1900s. Stagecoaches used to go there. It was a, like a, it was a meeting point for anybody going from Chicago to Milwaukee would hit that intersection in their stagecoach. And anybody going from Lake Geneva to Kenosha would go through that intersection. And uh, as a result, uh, as a result, it was a pretty busy intersection uh, at the time for, you know, stagecoaches and whatnot. And so just to kind of mark it, so that people knew where they were at, because again, these were dirt roads, right? They hung a brass ball there. I don't know who thought of that or why, but oh well. And um, so there was like, you know, a general store there and a saloon and what, whatever. And um, anyway, so that brass ball's been there ever since. And uh, for a while there was a fake one up there, but that real one is back now. That, that brass ball was put up there Oh, like early 1800s, something like that. I'd have to go back and look. Um, so the fact that, you know, it was reconditioned when they they found that the the people who donated it in the first place had it in their barn. And when the grandmother passed away, the kids found it, had it reconditioned, and then um, see, there's the lake the boat launch, but not the beach. And. Um, they had it reconditioned and put back up, uh, you know, later on. It's been um, it's been there ever since. People have tried to take it, believe it or not, but to no avail. It's I don't know. It's heavy. There's a lot of brass there, so that might have something to do with it, or just the thrill of taking it. I'm not sure, but and uh, talk to you later.